You have an incredible amount of power. Why should we trust you? Um, you shouldn't. In November 2022, the tech world was literally shaken. ChatGPT, a tool created by OpenAI, reached 1 million users in five days, becoming the fastest growing app in the history of the internet. Just look at the numbers. Netflix needed three and a half years to hit that mark, Facebook around 10 months, and Instagram two and a half months. ChatGPT did it in under a week. In six weeks, these guys have gone from zero in valuation to now being a $29 billion company, okay. give or take, Okay. in six weeks. And so in two years, it took Facebook two years to get to a million users. It took Instagram two years to get to a million users. It took Pinterest five months to get to a million users. It took Angry Birds 34 days to get to a million users. It took ChatGPT five days to get to a million users. By January 2023, monthly active users had surpassed 100 million, comparable to the early growth of TikTok or Google. Behind this revolution stands Sam Altman, an American entrepreneur and investor who has become the face of the AI debate. First of all, I think it's important to understand and think about GPT-4 as a tool, not a creature, which is easy to get confused. And it's a tool that people have a great deal of control over and how they use it. Uh, and second, GPT-4 and things, other systems like it, uh, are good at doing tasks, not jobs. A little over a decade ago, he ran the startup Looped, which wasn't a breakout success, but opened doors to Silicon Valley. You can use Looped with your friends on most other carriers or devices in the US. We are the largest social mapping service in the world, and very happy to announce that Looped will be free on the iPhone and in the App Store at launch. Anyway, we think this is a new era of mobile. We're thrilled to be part of it. At just 28, he became head of the legendary accelerator, Y Combinator, which backed companies like Airbnb, Dropbox, and Reddit. He later went all in on AI, investing his time, capital, and reputation into building open AI. Today, Altman is one of the most influential figures in technology. He sits at the same table as Donald Trump, testifies before the US Congress, advises governments, negotiates with corporate giants, and at the same time, warns about the potential risks the technology itself may bring. To some, he's a visionary. To others, a man who has taken the future of humanity into his own hands. One thing is certain, he may have the greatest impact on your future. So let's get into today's episode. I'm going to talk about uh, how to raise money since um, seems to be a popular question. Sam Altman was born in 1985 in St. Louis, Missouri, into a family of physicians. From an early age, he was fascinated by computers. At eight, he received his first Macintosh, which became his window into the world of technology. Before turning 20, he studied computer science at Stanford University, but like many of Silicon Valley's later giants, dropped out to build his own startup. In 2005, he founded Looped, a friend location app that was among the first in the iPhone ecosystem. We are incredibly psyched about Looped on the iPhone. Looped is about connecting with people on the go, which is, after all, the main reason you have a phone. We show you where people are, what they're doing, and what cool places are around you. The orange pin up there is where I am right now, and the blue pins represent my friends. Although Looped never became a global hit and was sold in 2012 for $43 million, the project earned Altman valuable connections and investor trust. That was the beginning of his path to the center of the tech world. The breakthrough came in 2014 when Altman became president of Y Combinator, Silicon Valley's most prestigious startup accelerator. He was only 28 and had outsized ambitions. I have no desire to go be a venture capitalist. I feel like where I can sort of really contribute to the world is making startups happen that would otherwise not. And YC is a way to do that. Y Combinator is an investment firm and we invest in startups. The founding idea of Y Combinator was a lot more people could start startups and that you have these very smart technical people that know how to build products but don't know how to run a company or start a company. It's somewhere between sort of a university and a venture firm. Under his leadership, YC expanded its scope and invested in hundreds of companies now worth a combined hundreds of billions of dollars. Airbnb, Dropbox, Reddit, Stripe. 
These are just some of the brands that passed through his hands. I started a company that went through the very first batch of Y Combinator. It was an idea that I was really passionate about. You know, most great ideas can only happen at a certain moment in time. And I knew that if I didn't do this thing right then, like that was when it was going to happen. Altman quickly became one of the most important figures in venture capital, known for spotting potential where others saw risk. At the same time, he had been fascinated by artificial intelligence for years. Altman repeatedly stated that AI is the most important technology humanity is currently working on and that over the long term, it could transform the economy more fundamentally than electricity or the internet. Now I think of it much more like any other technological revolution. Hopefully the biggest and the best and the most important and the greatest benefits. But you know, we have like a new tool in the tech tree of humanity and people are using it to create amazing things. I think it will continue to get way more capable and way more autonomous over time. The thing I'm personally most excited about, maybe of the whole AGI world, is that these models at some point are gonna help us discover new science mm -hmm. fast and in really meaningful ways. In 2015, together with Elon Musk, Greg Brockman, and several other entrepreneurs, he co-founded OpenAI. The goal was to build AI that would be safe and available to everyone, a counterweight to the closed commercial systems developed by giants like Google. Initially, OpenAI operated as a non-profit funded by donors and investors, but the scale of resources required led to the creation of a profit-oriented subsidiary in 2019, enabling a partnership with Microsoft and multi-billion dollar investments. Around the same time, a rift opened between Altman and Elon Musk, one of the co-founders. Musk, who had previously been the public face of the project, increasingly pushed to take greater control of OpenAI. When his proposals were rejected, he stepped down from the board and later became an outspoken critic of the organization, claiming it had strayed from its original ideals. OpenAI, I mean, you seem somewhat frustrated with them. You were one of the big contributors early on. The, the reason, I, I am the reason OpenAI exists. Um, How much money did you give them? Um, so, uh, I, I, I'm not sure the exact number, but it's some, some number on, on the order of $50 million. Uh, so, so the, the ho <laughs> man, fate loves irony, next level. Altman, however, stayed on, cementing his position as the company's chief architect of vision. Under his leadership, a series of breakthrough language models emerged. First came GPT-2, which already stirred controversy because OpenAI delayed full public release over misuse concerns. Then, in 2020, GPT-3 debuted, a model that set off global buzz in academia and business, paving the way for mass adoption of AI. You know, GPT-3 was basically the same thing as GPT-2, but just with, you know, a much larger uh, 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 network, you know, more training time, m bigger training corpus. It is equally clear that this is a major advance it over is. over over Eliza or really over anything that the world has seen before. Uh, this is a text engine that can come up with kind of on topic, you know, reasonable sounding completions to just about anything that you ask. But the true turning point was the launch of ChatGPT in November 2022, an application based on GPT 3.5 made available to everyday users as a simple free chat. That was the moment popularity exploded. A million users in five days, a hundred million in two months, and a global discussion that we were entering a new technological era. And that moment can be seen as one of the key inflection points for the world's future. Something both Altman and many analysts fully grasp. Since ChatGPT's release, Sam Altman has been at the center of a global debate over the future of artificial intelligence. As early as May 2023, he faced the question, you have an incredible amount of power, why should we trust you? He answered without hesitation, um, you shouldn't. You have an incredible amount of power at this moment in time, why should we trust you? Um, you shouldn't, like, uh, you know, I don't, 
as you, you've known me for a long time, um, public talking, like I'd rather be in the office working. I, I, but I think at this moment in time, like people deserve basically as much time asking questions as they want. And I'm trying to show up and do it. But more to that, uh, like no one person should be trusted here. This wasn't coyness. It was an admission that decisions about AI cannot rest in the hands of a single person or a single company. Altman has repeatedly warned about so-called superintelligence, AI capable of surpassing humans across most tasks. On the one hand, he promised the end of poverty, breakthroughs in medicine and energy. And on the other, he said plainly that if this goes wrong, it could go very wrong. In private conversations, he is even said to have claimed that the most likely scenario for AI development is the end of humanity, though, he added with irony, great profitable companies would emerge along the way. In the background, something equally important is unfolding, the fight over regulation. From 2023 to 2024, the number of entities lobbying in Washington on AI issues rose from around 150 to over 450. The biggest players spend tens of millions of dollars a year to soften or delay rules. Investment contracts even include definitions of artificial general intelligence pegged not to machines' cognitive abilities, but to generating $100 billion in profit. It means the line between a philosophical vision of AGI and the hard logic of corporate KPIS has blurred. I continue to believe there will come very powerful models that people can misuse in big ways. People talk a lot about the potential for new kinds of bioterror, models that can prevent, present like a real cybersecurity challenge, models that are capable of self-improvement in a way that leads to some sort of loss of control. Um, so I think there are big risks there. And it's precisely this mix, blistering development speed, a lack of clear rules and power concentrated in a handful of companies that creates the greatest tension around Sam Altman and his vision of the future. A 2024 study by the Stanford Institute for Human-Centered AI found that over 36% of experts working on AI believe that within the next 50 years, there is at least a 10% risk of a system emerging that slips beyond human control. It's like the joke, if you got 10 open AI researchers in a room and asked to define AGI, you'd get 14 definitions. These are not science fiction fantasies, but the fears of the very people building the technology. Altman himself has admitted that AGI could be the last invention of humanity because if we create a system more intelligent than we are, it will be able to create even better versions of itself at a pace no human can match. Maybe a better question is what will it take for something I would call super intelligence? Okay. Um, if we had a system that was capable of either doing autonomous discovery of new science or greatly increasing the capability of people using the tool to discover new science, um, that would feel like kind of almost definitionally super intelligence to me and be a wonderful thing for the world. Yet even before we reach super intelligence, very tangible risks are appearing. In 2019, the journal Science described an algorithm used in US healthcare that covered more than 200 million patients. The system was found to systematically discriminate against black patients, understating their health needs because it optimized for costs rather than quality of care. This shows that AI, trained on flawed data, not only reproduces existing biases, but can amplify them at massive scale. I hope this will be a moment where society realizes that privacy is really important. Privacy needs to be a core principle of using AI you cannot have. Similar concerns are raised in a 2025 Brookings Institution report, which emphasizes that deploying AI without proper regulation risks mass discrimination in hiring, credit, and even judicial decisions. Then there's the labor market. A 2025 Goldman Sachs report estimated that anywhere from 6% to even 14% of jobs worldwide could be replaced by AI in the coming years, depending on the scenario. Computers can't do everything. They're not going to do everything. The slightly longer answer with more than one word is that um, there will be more people, but each of them will do vastly more than what one person did, you know, in the pre-AGI times. Right. Particularly at risk are office roles, administration and creative work. Paradoxically, the very jobs once seen as safest. 
Brookings, at the same time, warned that worker retraining programs are not keeping up with the pace of change, and that millions could be pushed out of the labor market with no real alternative. That creates the risk of social tensions that could be as dangerous as the technology itself. What Altman has given the world will surely accelerate its progress and, for many, could become a path to wealth and development. Yet in the background, there are numerous threats. Sam Altman has already changed the world and in the years ahead, it will only pick up speed. The question is which direction it will ultimately take us. Let us know what you think about him and the current AAI revolution. That's all from me for today. Hear you in the next episode. Thank you and see you soon.